Hey professionals, having high quality captions is just step one to being a profitable editor. You need to be able to add them quickly to your timeline because the difference between well paid and not isn't how much, but how much per hour. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my four best practices to implementing captions as quickly as possible. Now, the first thing I recommend you do is just learn power bins in general. They're such a powerful tool. This is a great place to store your templates, including your captions. Now, before we get into power bins, here's something to know. One of the most time wasting things you can do is copying elements from one project to another. Having to open up a database, wait for one project to close, wait for the other to open, locating that asset you wanna copy across and then going all the way back again it's really time consuming. So what you wanna do is identify all the most common assets that you constantly use in all your projects and save them to a power bin. And this becomes your own personalized library of templates. Let's get into how to do that. First, you wanna left click on the meatball icons at your media pool in the top right. And you wanna make sure that show power bins is enabled. If there's no check mark, just left click to activate it. You'll see your power bins show up somewhere around here below your master. Then in your power bin, you wanna drag your most used templates here. So if you bought any of my snap captions, you could just drag and drop in here and it'll add it to the power bin. Now, you can divide them by category. And one of the ones I really like doing is breaking them apart per brand. So for each client I work with, I actually create their own folder with their own customized fonts, backgrounds, and captions, of course, as well. This is especially useful if you have a lot of retainer clients as you'll be constantly pulling these into your projects. So once you have all your templates and your caption templates stored in the power bin, all I have to do is drag them into my regular project folder and they're ready to use. Now, quick tip, if you're using snap captions, make sure snap captions can find the text plus element. This means not dragging folders into your snap captions folder, but just dragging the text plus elements into your snap caption folder. This is the only way this works as the snap captions plugin can only look one bin deep and it's only looking for your snap captions folder under a master bin. Best practice number two, correct the subtitling track before generating the text plus track. Now a key concept to being productive is to be as non-destructive in your video editing workflow as possible. So if a client asks for a change or you spot a mistake, it's humanly quick as possible to make that update at the end instead of having to redo something you've done at the beginning. And this is true triple true for captions because not only is there a style to get right, but there's spelling and grammar. And look, as someone who's edited videos for all around the world, English has many different ways of spelling you'd be surprised about. So the typical mistake I've seen editors make is destructive workflows. Here's a literal example of what that looks like. First, they generate subtitle transcripts and then just take the raw transcript and generate a text plus style straight away. Then they make all their changes, including spelling and grammar checks on the text plus clips. Here's the issue with what just happened. Hypothetically, if a client asks for a style change in the captions, you have to regenerate all the text plus in a new style, which means you have to redo all the spelling, pacing, and grammar changes you made before. So now you're doubling up on the work that's already been done. But if the editor made spelling and grammar changes in the subtitle track, there'd be no doubling up work whatsoever. They can just hit generate and all the captions would be correct. This is what it means to have a non-destructive workflow. Best practice number three isn't a tool or a trick, but just something you should always be including in your workflow because it's so simple, but saves a huge amount of time. And that's simply having a proofread in your process. Every editor should have a process, your own personalized recipe that allows you to create videos in your style efficiently. And it bothers me how many editors don't have a proofread session in their video process. As an editor, we are in charge of reviewing and having quality control on the videos we edit. It's really easy to miss details. Make sure at the end of your videos, you have a proofread session. And all you're focusing on is spelling and grammar and placement of text. You're not looking at colors, you're not looking at shots, or definitely not pacing. You're just reading all the text, captions and titles, and making sure they are perfect and correct. Just doing that, it'll save time in not just review sessions, but client satisfactions. And honestly, if you came with too many of those mistakes, you'd probably end up losing the client as they don't wanna be the one telling you you've made a mistake. It's a really simple mistake and I made it plenty of times early in my career and it probably stifled it a bit if I'm being honest, but just make sure you get it right going forward and it'll really make a big difference to the results you get. And the next trick I'm gonna share is selective muting. So this is a technique of muting or disabling audio clips you don't wanna generate captions for. Many DaVinci Resolve editors don't know this, but the create audio from subtitles feature only listens to the bus output or in simple terms, it ignores muted tracks. So there's two powerful uses for this. One, 
you can disable outside noise to increase accuracy of your transcript. So if you've added captions, sound effects, screen recordings with guns and gameplay, they end up being combined with the main speaker's voice and it creates a muffled result that Resolve has a harder time transcribing. So by simply disabling them, you get better and more accurate transcriptions. So this is especially useful if you have multiple speakers with separate audio, such as gameplay, podcasts, or skits. Now, what's really beautiful about this is all you have to do is set a audio line for each speaker. Then when you go to generate your transcripts, you just mute the line of one speaker and then you mute the line of the other. You'll end up with two subtitle tracks, one for each speaker. Now, you can generate different colored captions or styles for each subtitle track, and voila, you have different styles of captions per speaker. To do this, you do need to have each speaker recorded individually, otherwise you gotta go through this whole manual cutting process, and no one has time for that. And then going on from there, the next productivity tip I would recommend is checking out this video over here. And as always, I really enjoy creating these videos. It still blows me away how fast this channel is growing day in, day out. And I cannot thank you all enough so much for helping support it. So again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And until then, I'll catch you around.